I noticed on this watch through that Zach Callison, Steven Universe's voice actor, voices the young version of the protagonist in this movie. So uh, that's some fun trivia. Shout Factory and G-Kids are releasing a new Apple TV bundle with six great Studio Ghibli films. You can get the movie separately or buy the bundle and get a discounted price. There's a link in the description, so please check it out. I talked about The Secret World of Arietti last week, so now let's talk about another one of my favorite films from this studio, The Wind Rises. I actually have this really cool Japanese picture book adaption of The Wind Rises, because I like it so much. I got this at Epcot in Disney World a few years ago, and it's one of my favorite things that I own. It's really clean, and I'm glad I have an excuse to show it now, I guess. But uh, anyways, what makes me like this movie so much? Well, Wind Rises is a very interesting piece from Ghibli because it's basically entirely based in reality. Aside from dream sequences and some cartoonish expressions and sound effects, this movie is entirely grounded. It's not like a fairy tale the way that many other of their films are. The movie is a fictionalized biopic about Jiro Horikoshi, the designer of the Mitsubishi A5M airplanes used in World War II. The story follows Jiro's entire life, from being a young boy fascinated with flight, to gradually becoming a lead airplane engineer, and falling in love. I would have never thought that a movie so focused on aircraft engineering could be so entertaining, but they find a way to make it so. This is a topic and story I would have never really gone out of my way to see, but the way they adapt it into an anime story makes it really enjoyable. There's a big focus on chasing your dreams and sort of like the art of engineering rather than it being sort of overly technical in a way that a casual viewer just wouldn't be able to wrap their head around anything. It's totally possible for anyone to enjoy this movie. Now with that said, it's still important to mention that a significant amount of this movie is fictional. It's a mix between the novel The Wind Has Risen and the real life of Jiro Horikoshi. So it really isn't the best source at all for actual historical information. It's more so made entirely as an entertaining movie about living life and following your dreams. Like the love story that's present in this movie is totally made up. Which I find sort of interesting because it's a significant part of this film, yet it's something that didn't actually happen in real life at all. It's a very very sappy, love at first sight type of deal. But at the same time, it's like poetic in a weird way. Just something about the plain dialogue and the mundane ways that the characters show love to each other is really undeniably sweet. And I'm always a sucker for that sort of thing in anime. Anime stories always emphasize the little things in life. And The Wind Rises does that through an interesting lens. It's a story during a war time, but the war is like a secondary focus. First and foremost, we're just watching Jiro follow his dreams and live his life. This is probably weird to say, but this movie is like if the intro to Up was a two hour long movie. You know? It's a very nice and calming film, despite having a plot that could have been handled in a much more dramatic way. The way everything's drawn is so beautiful to look at, and a lot of the sound design is unique and fun too. There aren't many instances of like, iconic, fluid Ghibli animation. This film definitely highlights its scenery art and cinematography more than motion animation, and I always appreciate seeing that type of approach. Again, I never would have thought I'd have much interest in airplanes, but this movie definitely grabs me the way airplanes are drawn to be such graceful creations. It's a really minor thing, but I love the way that Jiro's glasses were drawn. Like, yeah, it obviously makes him look iconic, but also the way that they handle the magnification and reflection of his eyes is, like, really realistic. Like, there's attention to detail on that that you wouldn't really care to notice unless you're looking, but I definitely noticed. It was really cool. The glasses aren't just plain transparent objects on his face. They'll actually reflect and magnify his eyes depending on the angle of the camera, and that's it's just a cool detail I liked. The English dub is pretty good. Lots of celebrities that I'm not too familiar with. Everyone's voices match great, but there's a lot of weird, like, monotone delivery. You can tell they're just reading straight from a script. Given the focus on Japanese history here, this is probably actually a movie that feels more natural if you just watch it with the original dub. Apparently, the creator of Neon Genesis Evangelion voices Jiro in the original dub. So that's more pretty cool voice actor trivia. Actually, I can't remember where I heard this, but I think they chose him because he, like, wasn't that good of a voice actor. And they wanted Jiro to be very realistic and relatable. Maybe that was in the documentary about this movie. I watched that documentary, like, years ago, but I still remember a lot of the details and stuff. Same with this movie as a whole. The first time I watched this was probably two or three years ago, but I remember so much about it. That's just a testament to how much I like it, I guess. If you're interested in this sort of time period and a movie focused on aircrafts, but want a little more fantasy and action, then maybe you'll like Ghibli's Porco Rosso instead, which is also included in the Apple TV bundle. Wind Rises is definitely more my speed, though. I turn to anime for sweet, beautiful short stories, and The Wind Rises definitely delivers on that. Even if it's significantly fictionalized, it conveys a story from an interesting perspective, in a way that can't be done outside of animation. If you've seen this movie, let me know your thoughts about it in the comments, and let me know what your favorite Ghibli movie is. It's very hard for me to pick because I haven't watched a lot of them in a few years, but The Wind Rises and Arietti are definitely up there, as well as when Marnie was there in Kiki's Delivery Service. I definitely have to watch Howl's Moving Castle again, it's been a very long time since I watched that. 
Oh, Whisper of the Heart too. That has the same sort of grounded setting that Wind Rises has and a very, you know, sappy romance that I just fall in love with. <laughs> thanks for watching and super special thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to know when I post a new video. Be sure to stay tuned for more new videos and live streams. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok to get frequent updates and video clips. And consider supporting me on Patreon for just $2 a month to get some behind the scenes content, like scripts and review notes, and even early videos. Once we get about 20 Patreon supporters, I'll start a Discord server for us to chat.